I'm here to help explain why we use different wavelengths of light to attack different pigments in a tattoo. We use 1064, 694, and 532, and they affect, you know what? Follow me to the lab and I'll show you. So we're here today with Jordan Hall, one of our biomedical engineers at Sans Laser, and he's gonna explain to you why we use three different wavelengths specifically to target all colors of ink. Say, Jordan? Hello, my name is Jordan. We're going to talk a little bit about absorption today. First, we need to talk about why we see certain things as certain colors. The reason that we see this balloon as this pinkish red color is because it absorbs all other wavelengths of light and reflects that pink and red color back to our eyes. Same thing with turquoise, same thing with all other colors that you see. So, when we're trying to target the ink in our skin during tattoo removal, we need to use the right wavelengths to match the right color of the ink. So, First, we're going to try to pop this black balloon. Here's our model. The balloon is going to represent the ink pigment, and the clear balloon on top is going to represent all the stuff that the laser has to pass through to get down to the pigment. All the structures in the skin that it has to go through to get to the pigment that we want to get. So Jordan is now going to show us how the use of different wavelengths of light are going to affect the balloons differently, and hopefully pop them all. Take it away, Jordan. Thanks, Josh. All right. First, we gotta get on our safety glasses. Alright, I'm gonna get myself situated. So, when we're trying to uh, break up black ink in the skin, the wavelength that we use is 1064. Now, black is actually a kind of a special case. Um, black is actually the absorption of all wavelengths of light, um, as said, and it reflects nothing back. Okay? So, when we want to pop black, we go to 1064, we get our laser ready. Three, two, one. We can pop it very easily. All right, so we pop 1064 very easily. Now, 1064 is great for popping black, but it's not gonna be quite as good for popping red because it's such a long wavelength. It doesn't catch red quite as much and it's not absorbed as heavy. Remember, red things absorb all of the wavelengths and reflect red right back. So, let's take a look and try to pop this one with 1064, just like we did with the black one. Okay. All right, three, two, one. No pop, no confetti. Very disappointing on the whole. Now, let's switch to a more appropriate wavelength and try to pop it with that. So, in this machine, we can change to 532. Now, when we're targeting red ink inside the skin, we always use 532 first because it works very heavily with red. Let's see how it does on the blue. Three, two, one. It's pretty great. Now let's talk about our two blue. Teal is going to be just like 532, and that's going to absorb some stuff, and it's going to reflect some stuff. Now, we're going to try it with 1064, but we know 1064 is a pretty safe wavelength, so I'm not super hopeful that it's going to pop. Let's give it a try anyway. Alright, 3, 2, 1. Nothing. I'm going to need some help to get this one to pop. Josh, come here. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay, so as Jordan was saying, if we want to get a teal balloon to pop, we use kind of a green light to pop red, so we're going to use a red light to pop green or blue. My glasses on make this look blue. When you want to do that, we have a ruby laser which fires at 694, which to your eye is definitely. Everybody want to put your new special goggles on? For the ruby laser? Alrighty. I'm excited for this. Think I'm going to get it? I think you're going to get it. Alright. Three. It works! Thanks, Jordan. That was fun. Appreciate you teaching us all about wavelengths and absorption. Absolutely, Josh. Alright, we'll see you back in the studio.